What's up you guys, Rex here. And just a quick video today sharing how grades work in medical school. I spent a ton of time worrying about getting in that I never really thought about what it'd be like once I got here. So the bottom line with medical school grades is that it's pass fail. That's not the case for every medical school. So I'll only re be talking about what I really know about, which is Duke University where I go to medical school. Now, I would say this is probably the case for the majority of medical schools is something similar to this at least. And, and more and more schools are going pass fail. So that's something you can expect is that you will have pass fail grades, but you're still getting graded on stuff. And I wondered how that worked as far as like, are there homework assignments, tests, papers, exams, quizzes, all that kind of stuff. So I'll be covering how I am getting graded within pass fail as a Duke medical student. All right, so this is how grades work. And the biggest thing to worry about is in order to pass. And so human structure and function, that's like the course that I take at medical school, as far as that covers all of everything from biochemistry to genetics, to anatomy, to histology. I'm also taking a course called Clinical Skills Foundation. And so that's learning the basics of doctoring. And then I'm also taking a course called Cultural Determinants of Health and Health Disparities. And that's sort of just an extra course that all the Duke medical students take. But as far as like actual, what you think of with medical school, it's human structure and function. So the first requirement is score at least 60% on all exams and practicals. So I'll be doing a separate video on like how exams work in medical school. So make sure you subscribe, hit notifications if you wanna see that in the future. But basically we get an exam every two weeks on a Monday, unless there's no class on that day. And then with that, we'll have practicals, whether that's an anatomy practical or a histology practical. And we gotta get at least 60% on all of those exams. If we do fail it, you do get a chance to retake it. It's not like, one shot you're out like they will do everything they can to make sure you eventually pass so then the next criteria is averaging 50 percent within each of the subject sections of the multiple choice exam so this is talking about the exams that happen every two weeks they do give you a breakdown of the different topics and so you do have to get at least a 70 percent overall averaging all of the exams within the different categories so you can't just say all right I do not care about histology, I just refuse to learn that. You do have to learn all of the different content areas, biomedical sciences, histology, neuroscience, gross anatomy, and physiology. And so then requirement number three is average of 70% or better on gross anatomy and histology practicals. This is now the practical section. So this last exam round, I had a histology practical. The exam round before that, I had an anatomy practical. This next one, I have an anatomy practical. And so that's sort of separate from the multiple choice exams. And then the next category, number four, is averaging a 60% or better on all of our IRAs, which is like individual readiness assurance. And so throughout the semester, we have different times where as a method of learning, you sort of learn by doing it, sort of like a flipped classroom thing. And so you take this IRA first and that you take it by yourself. It's like 15 questions, multiple choice. You don't really have to study for it, but you have to do some learning to prepare for it. And then immediately after that, you have number five, which is a TRA or team application. And that's where you take the same exam that you took in your IRA again with a group of like six people. And so that's the TRA. And then the team application is as part of the learning, you sort of do a sort of apply your knowledge type thing where they might give you a patient and you sort of have to figure out what's going on based on what you learned that night before or that day before in preparation for this TRA, IRA, and team application. And then the last category is just submitting two acceptable self-directed learning seminar papers. Honestly, I don't know a ton about these yet. I haven't gotten to those and those come later in the semester, I guess. And they're sort of like research paper type things. And, and they're not, they said they're not something to worry about. They're obviously something we have to do. And it's one of those things where I don't think anyone's gonna fail these papers. And that's not because they're super easy, it's just because all of the students that are at Duke are good students and are gonna put effort into it. And so it's something that I think you just have to put effort into and trust that you are a educated enough medical student that when you put effort into something, it has some good results. And so that's not something I'm stressed about. I'm sure I will be able to get two acceptable papers within the term or whenever I have to do it. So yeah, so that's how grades work in medical school. Quick video, hopefully you learned something if you were interested. That wasn't something I was super concerned about when I was applying to medical school. I was much more focused on getting in. And now that I'm here, I sort of care even less. Like I'm here to learn, I'm not here for grades. I don't care about grades. Pass fail is the greatest thing ever that I don't have to worry about that whatsoever.
But yeah, so if you like the video, like the video. If you dislike the video, dislike the video. Any questions, comments, or concerns whatsoever, I'd love to hear about them down below. I'll read and respond to every single comment. And until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great.